watching Bigfoot Society. I'm your host, Jeremiah Byron. I talk to people about Bigfoot encounters that they've had in a safe and respected environment. Today, we'll be interviewing Mr. Joseph Bruce or Violent J from ICP or the band Insane Clown Posse, as most people will know him by. Violent J is an American rapper, author, professional wrestler, and so much more. During this interview, we talk about Violent J's Bigfoot encounter from the 1990s in a suburb of Detroit. We also talk about his feelings about Todd Standing and the craziest Bigfoot story that Violent J has ever read over the years. There's a lot of this interview that did get cut out because I like my channel the way it is. So if you would like to watch the full unedited episode. You can always head over to patreon.com forward slash the Bigfoot Society to become a supporting member and to hear the full uncensored audio and video version. And I believe the video will be up uh, for channel members on YouTube as well. Um, and you can click the join button there to become a supporting member. If you're new here, please take a minute to subscribe to the channel and to hit the bell icon so you don't miss out on any future episodes. Come out with new episodes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. And please take a minute to share this episode with all your friends and online uh, ICP and or Bigfoot groups. Uh, appreciate all the new viewers coming by and uh, a hello to all the juggalos as well. Uh, good to see you here. So let's get on with the show and enjoy my chat with Violent J from the band Insane Clown Posse. All right, Bigfoot Society, we got the privilege of talking with uh, Jay from out there in Detroit, Michigan. How's it going today, Jay? It's going good, man. People might be like, what's up, man? <laughs> Why my has he got like, the painted face? What, why does this guy have painted face on? Well, right. uh, cat's out of the bag. Uh, Jay, you might be well known for some things. Do you mind sharing uh, what you may be well known for? Well, mostly would be the um, uh, one half of the insane clown posse. Uh, we've been rappers. We're from Detroit. We've been rappers for 30, 32 years now. You know what I'm saying? And I'm 51 years old, and uh, we've been wearing the clown paint and torn and doing our thing forever. If you don't know me, Google. It's party time, Jay. It's party time. So I got I got to share uh, the story about how this all came about because it's, it's kind of interesting, right? So uh, I was checking Instagram, and I noticed that I got an interesting follow from Violent Jay, and I was like, is that... This is, this is kind of weird. I got I to gotta jump into this a little bit. And uh, lo and behold, you are a big Bigfoot fan. And we got to chatting. Uh, of course, I was like, welcome to Bigfoot Society, Violent J. How's it going? And uh, the cool thing about Bigfoot Society is for people that may not know, it's a platform for people to share their Bigfoot encounters in a safe and respected environment, right? That's the main reason I have this podcast. And Jay was like, you know, I actually had something I'd like to share. And so welcome to Bigfoot Society, Violent Jay. Jay. Hey, and uh, thank you, brother. would you mind sharing what happened to you, sir? I don't mind at all. As a matter of fact, um, I'm a fan of uh, all the, uh, you know, a lot of the uh, podcasts and YouTube shows and things like that about Bigfoot, you know. And I've always wanted to uh, share my encounter with a lot of, you know, but I, of course I chose, I, I highly intelligently chose my platform, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and you, thus here I am, and I'm privileged, blessed, and honored to share my Bigfoot encounter. But I got to tell you this, I don't like the way the Bigfoot world is constantly in a battle royal with each other. You know what mm. I mean? Tell me more. And, and I don't like the way everybody including myself sometimes critique other people's Bigfoot stories. Okay. Because, um, Bigfoot stories come, as you guys know, come in all varieties and some mm -hmm. of them involve supernaturalness 
You know what I mean? Oh yeah. And things like that. And and uh, orbs and Bigfoot's teleporting. And sometimes people get judgmental about that stuff, but damn it, I was judgmental about Bigfoot before I seen one. <laughs> so, so um that's what I'm saying. Like um people I, I don't wanna be judged by my Bigfoot story because my Bigfoot story has some misbeliefs in it that I have a hard time processing and understanding. And I didn't make the shit up. The shit happened to me. You know what I mean? And so I'm going to tell it like it is as corny as a lot of it is. This is how it went down. You know what Absolutely. I mean? Absolutely. And I, I, don't, I can be judged. So actually... Uh, it's okay. I don't mind being judged. I'm judged my whole life, but um, I don't know. For some reason, when the truth is involved, you can't change the story up to make it sound cool. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's gonna be one way the way it happened. And here at 51, I think about it, and a lot of it sounds crazy, but damn it, it's the way it happened. You know what I mean? So what am I gonna do? You know? Okay. Oh. And yeah. So um, what I wanted to show you was that um, I put out a book like in 2004, I, I believe, and um, maybe 2003. Anyway, it chronicled my life up until that point, okay? And the, when you open the book, the first thing you'll see is a story, and it's me telling this story, okay? This very story, because... When it happened to me when I was 17, or Sasquatches, anything, I know anything like that. So when this shit happened, um, I thought it was, I'll, I'll explain it in a minute. But the last thing I thought was that this was a Bigfoot counter until, damn, I was probably 44. Wow. And my mom called me, my, my mom told me, Joe, check out Bigfoot. And I was like, what do you mean? She's like, just watch up on YouTube, look into it, just look into it. I was like, Mom, Bigfoot's corny, I want to look into it. And once I started looking into it, not only did I become fascinated, but I realized that's quite possibly exactly what I saw. You know what I'm saying? And here I got the story in my book chronicling, and in the entire story, nowhere does it say Bigfoot or Sasquatch. That's because I'm a kid from Detroit. And mm. I was just not hip to what the hell a Sasquatch was. You know what I'm saying? Or Bigfoot. So I didn't ever put that together with what I saw. You know what I mean? Anyway, I'll tell you I'll tell you the story though, but I don't care who judged me. Everybody judge away. But um here's what happened. So and to, to to explain myself first, at the time my brother was in the military, okay? And I was planning on going in the military too. I thought as soon as I turned 18, I could get into the military. So I was on this heavy workout campaign thing. I'm going running all the time. I'm doing sit-ups every night. And um, so to make sense of this is hard, but this is what I was doing. I go through my day and I we'd work out or whatever, me and my friends. But at night, I'd get in bed. And, and, and it'd be the middle of the night. Oh, here goes here goes the uh, the book I was telling you about. See right, right here, this is this is my book. And right okay. here at the beginning tells monster, you know, because that's what I've seen. I love it. Look love at it. it. Yeah, dude. In your face. <laughs> Let's do so, it. So um, <laughs> so um, so at night I get in my bed. You know, and the first girlfriend I ever had, she would leave because she had to work in the morning. And, and I would, um, she would leave. We'd watch Arsenio Hall, the mm. first run <laughs> yeah. back in the 90s, I believe. So she'd leave and um, I'd be laying there and um, I'd be just about to fall asleep. And then something would tell me if the house is on fire, Right now, you'd have to jump out of bed. You'd have to rescue mom. You know, so to train for that, to properly train for that, and to get yourself ready for basic training and all that, 
you got to jump out of bed right now and run about four blocks away into the park where the woods are. And in the, in the woods, in the center of the woods was a giant hill, okay? In the center of where this park of woods was is a giant hill. Anyway, it doesn't make, it doesn't make no sense, but I'd be laying there telling myself, you need to do that right now. And I would be like, no, you don't you need to go back up in bed. And, and it would be like, yes, you do. You need, because you, you can't tell the fire to go back to bed if you had to get up and rescue my, you know. So then I'd also spring out of bed, throw my shoes on, and just run with my dog out the door. And I just start booking as fast as I can. I'm getting winded thinking about it. Running those, running the block, another block, all the way up. And then I'd get into the woods and I'd run through the woods and there's this gigantic mound at the beginning of the woods. And I would run all the way up in, and I would scream with my arms out, ultimate warrior. All right. Now, let me point out something right quick. All right. <laughs> yes, I'm a wrestling fan. All right. Yes. But this did not have nothing to do with the ultimate warrior. Okay. okay. Those two words was a word probably inspired by the ultimate warrior, but it was a phrase that my brother and I adapted when we were training and when we were doing crazy things. Cause you think about it, I'm a warrior. I'm the ultimate warrior. Even though it was this wrestler, it was also a good word to use in, in our, you know, moments of, uh, bravery or whatever oh, yeah. or, or celebration you know what i mean so uh i'd run up there and i would yell that every night oh it was probably two in the morning i figured because arsenio went off at one karen would leave and i'd be laying in bed about to fall asleep probably about, about two and then all of a sudden i'm out the door you know booking through the neighborhood you know and this was in a suburb of detroit right called okay. ferndale and I would, or actually Ferndale bordering Hazel Park, right along like nine mile, uh, in 10 mile anyway. So I'm running and um, I'm in the dark woods, do that shit every night. You know what I mean? Mm. Oh, Jimmy Warrior, man, my brother's in the war. I remember and I'm thinking I'm going in and I was just like, I got to stop torching myself like this. You know what I mean? Like, but I am getting good. Here's where it gets crazy. This one night, I remember all day, I was hanging out with my friend. And it was one of those days where it was cold and super windy, crazy windy, right? And um, and I, I look up, and it's one of those days where the clouds are going super fast. They're all moving together. There's not no crazy funnel clouds or nothing. But the sky's just going just really fast by, you know, and it's going to be cold and scary tonight. And I was telling myself already, it was like two in the afternoon. I'm already thinking about, no, not tonight, you know. So sure enough, Karen is um got to go for her job at the video store. Remember them? But I got oh, DVDs. Yeah. And <laughs> she would go to work there. And um, I was like, it's so scary. I'm going to watch her. Not only did I walk her to her car, but I watched her all, go all the way down the block to the lights. I couldn't see the lights no more and turn off, you know. So even I was still telling myself I wasn't going to do it. So I go up in the room. I lived above my, my mom in the, in the attic above. And I went up in there, and I was laying there, and I was all comfortable. And I started saying, if you do it tonight, you, 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 I have to do it for weeks because you did it tonight. I'm telling myself this. I'm like, if you go out tonight and you run out there tonight on this night, on this terrifying full moon night with mm. the clouds whipping by in the sky, it's cold as hell, if you bust out of here, and run all those four blocks and through those woods and up that hill tonight, you can take a break for a month, probably. <clears throat> so I was like, boom, and I busted out. And my dog's running with me. Man, I'm busting. I'm busting, busting around that corner, down that block, down this long block. 
in Detroit, we got like two kinds of blocks. There's like small blocks and then long blocks, even in the suburbs. And um, man, I'm going down at long blocks. I, I, I run in there, I run up the hill and I turn around and I yell, ultimate war. And right when I almost finished yelling the word, it, it seemed like, and I don't think this is relevant to the story, but it was crazy interesting. It seemed like, like a punch in the face with a, a blast of ice cold wind. I was like, ultimate war. And it was like, whoa. And my eyes watered up super bad. You know what I mean? And I was like, oh, fate's trying to stop me. You know what I mean? And I, <laughs> and I was like, I'm doing it again. And I did it again. That time there was no gust of wind, but I yelled it all to me for as loud as I could. And then I even grabbed my dog and lifted her paws up and yelled with her, oh, to me boy, you stop, it's unstoppable, you know? So I finished cleaning my eyes out, whatever. I was still terrified. The night itself was terrifying. This night did not, nothing was right about the whole day, right? And uh, I'd been doing this probably two months every night, right? This whole day, I was I never thought about this until it was time to, where it hit me. But this whole day, I'm like, I don't want to go out and do this tonight. And I did it. So I start running back down the hill, having conquered and yelled the shit, you know. I start run, running back down the hill, and I run up maybe all the way up the first long block. But I don't see my dog nowhere, right? Anyway, I'm totally winded. I'm blew up, like as they say in wrestling. So mm -hmm. I stopped, and I'm breathing, and and I turn around, and I'm looking for the dog, and I see her come running, but not up to me. She just ghosted me and ran right past me, like she came out of the darkness, basically, into the because I was kind of under a street light a little bit. But she went random past me and just bolted, like, like no interest in me, right? So I look back. Okay, so I'm looking down a, a, um, a street. Sounds like a never place you would see something like this, right? But this is what I saw. I'm looking down. It wasn't a city street. I'm not, like, in tall buildings. We're, like, off in the suburbs where it connects with the woods or whatever. Right. But I'm looking down the street, and I see... This, this, um, what I thought was a branch falling, okay? Because at the bottom of the hill, I mean, at the bottom of the hill through the woods, there's a parking light off to, I mean, a parking lot off to the to the side. So when I saw movement in the woods, I thought a branch was falling from from the um the wind was crazy that night, you know. But I in, and I got a chill, like, oh, I'm seeing something crazy. This giant branch is falling. But then it wasn't a branch. It was like it was <laughs> it was walking through the woods, right? Everything you can describe is what I saw, so I don't even care, man. It looked like it was swinging its arms in it and it, um that's I just as I saw it for a second, but it stopped. And then it just rushed me. Really? It just came rushing me. It, it bluff like, charged you. Man, it it freight trained me because I was so scared that I was frozen. And that's a real genuine thing that can happen because I was legit stunned. And when it came out of the woods, it was as tall as the stop sign. That's what was happening. And its feet looked like like our feet go down, the leg goes down, then the foot goes like that, you know? I'm yeah. sorry, the leg goes down, the foot goes like that, right? Right, right. His whole leg went down, like from the knee, it just went down to a foot. There was no feet. It was just like 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 he had bell bottoms on. All the way oh, to the wow. floor, you know what I'm saying? Okay. And it was just okay. fur, like like uh, almost like Chewbacca coming at me, bro. When I finally got my wind, I turned around and I bolted. Like I just, I, I swear, I probably set some kind of record because I was in physical shape, right? 
Sure. It don't matter how fast I was going. I only remember my feet barely connecting with the street, like like in time. As I was running, my legs were outrunning my own ability. And I was the first thought was run up and start banging on somebody's door. And then I was like, what the hell are they gonna do? Watching me get ripped in half on this porch. I remember these thoughts because when something happens to you like that, you don't forget it. I remember running and thinking of my what are my um options? You know what I mean? And the first thought was run up to somebody's bang on the door. I'm like, hey, give me all the shit. Let alone you think of a maniac. Nobody. So then I run around the corner and I didn't even look back. I just kept running to the fastest of my ability. I ran all down the, down the other corner and uh, into my mom's house. And again, I remember thinking, start screaming for mom. And I was like, what? What is my mom going to do against that? You know what I'm saying? What I just saw come barreling and rushed me, freight train style, right under the light, the street light. I'm literally frozen, stuck looking at it, and it's rushing me. You know what I'm saying? So um, <laughs> I ran in the house, and I dove under, and this is when the phone was on the wall. You know oh, what yeah. I mean? Yeah, Nobody yeah. had no cells. And... Uh, I had, I leaned, I, I remember I was laying under the windows, dead silent, you know, and I was like, um, I didn't know what to do. I was, my heart was beating so fast, you know, and I, I knocked the phone off the wall and I called my friend Nate and I was like, come over right now. And he came pulling up and I was just like, I, 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 I thought it wouldn't have made no difference against that. You know what I mean? So. I just screamed at him to take me away, and I let my mom keep sleeping because I thought, even then, I thought everybody's got somebody sleeping in it in the house. I, I I doubt they're gonna attack my mom. All I need to do, if it was after me, all I need to do is get out of here. You know what I'm saying? And that was my thinking, you know. So, um, but man, all you know, the next day, me and my brother went out there and did it again, and nothing, you know. We did it again for probably, but here's the, here's what my brother told me. My brother's right. um three years older than me, very accomplished uh, person, uh, EMT veteran, war veteran, you know all that. So my brother um was telling me at the time I never used the word Bigfoot again. I didn't know what Bigfoot was. I never thought anything, but it was like almost like the blob. If you mm. talk about the blob or, or Godzilla, you know what I mean? I didn't think anything about Bigfoot. So um, he was like, um, here's what I think. And we can talk about Bigfoot and geographic and all that, where they're at. The oh, country. for sure. Oh, yeah. But my, my brother, my brother was like, he said, um, this is the, what I, I carried in my mind. One of two things that happened. And... The likely one is what my brother said. My brother said, um, that hill may have been some sort of Native American burial ground. You know oh. what I mean? Yeah. You know, centuries ago, even who knows, right? And um, he, he said, by going up, by, he said, by going up there and yelling those words, okay, in a rush of adrenaline like that to where you're actually meaning it and you're screaming on the top of that hill ultimate warrior like you're some kind of ultimate warrior on some on we don't know what is under that hill yeah feeling insulted perhaps or maybe i'm calling a challenge who knows, right? And when it finally chose to emerge on that night when I did it three times or whatever, and it made me just laughed and said wow. exactly. You know what I'm saying? Man. And laughed and laughed. I don't know. But that was when my brother gave me that possibility, I was like, when I was 17, I was like, well, that's probably what what hap what it was. You know what I'm saying? That's that's probably what happened. And um 
it made the most sense. You know what I'm saying? So, um, and thank God for my brother Nate, by the way, who became a cop later in life in New Jersey. Oh, there you go. So, Nate. So, All right. <laughs> so, um, anyway, the other possibility, right? The more logical, but highly not likely, but more logical because it's not involving supernaturalness or demons from the burial ground. The other thing that may have happened is that what if there was some mechanic that lived right on the edge of that park and he worked nights in his garage with his buddy, right? And they're in there and every night they hear some lunatic that sets their dog off or something screaming ah, yeah, you know I mean? yeah yeah right and so after two or two after a month or two months of that you know what i mean who's to say this is the part that's highly unlikely though who's to say they didn't have a friend in who say they weren't friends with giant gonzalez or <laughs> andre the giant right or yes some, some, you know, Wilt Chamberlain or somebody, you know what I'm saying? Who, somebody massive, right? Who yeah. say Shaq ain't their homie on some roller decks, you know? So, and they had a friend, you know, um, I don't know who walks around as tall as a stop sign. Okay, right. I don't know exactly how tall a stop sign is in Detroit, but it's way taller than me. And the other thing was, People have described this thing as like barrel chested and, and uh, massive, like a, like a linebacker or whatever. It was definitely what I saw wasn't skinny by any means, but it was athletic. <laughs> like it was coming at me in a massive stride. Mm. And, um, and I didn't hear nothing. I, it was hard to process because I was coming out of that frozen fear. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, I you know it, it, a a a panic attack. By the way, is the way it was explained to me is when your brain dumps a chemical. It's like if you turned around and seen a train coming at you, sure, or a truck. You're either gonna have the reflexes to jump out of the way, or you're gonna be frozen for a second, like ah, you know, that's that chemical spreading in your body, record speeds from your brain dumping like panic, <laughs> and you stop for a second. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So a panic a panic attack is like when you're sitting at home having dinner or whatever you're doing, and all of a sudden that chemical dumps for no reason. It's like some people just have that problem, including myself. But I understand right. panic and in, in how extreme it can be. You know what I mean? And oh, yeah. seeing something like that is something you're never going to forget, that whole experience. And, yeah, man, and in, in, um, years and years later, I look at it, man, and I'm like, Okay, what if it was a Bigfoot, right? Because that's exactly what it looked like to me. You know what wow. I mean? And I think, uh, what would it be? First of all, if two things would have to be crazy. Number one, that crazy ass night. I mean, it could have happened on any night if it was just a carry of Sasquatches on the edge of, of the woods, you know, coming out looking for trash or something to eat. You know, I don't know what. And heard me yelling. That's what don't seem right. Why would it come charging? Why wouldn't it hate or why wouldn't it leave and hide? Why would it bulldoze me like that? Why would it, it you know? You, you might know, have been too like close this. to like maybe it's where it's uh its family was or like you're getting too close to its special like zone sasquatch zone who knows i don't know you know it, it, it i think like what if it was a young sasquatch who who i don't know what age who knows anything right but what if it was mm. a young sasquatch who's tired of following around all the time and wants mm. to go off on his own right and so he's off in a place he shouldn't be he's looking for food and he's been off now for like three days hiding out in a tree at night or you know in a day or whatever you know what if it's doing that right and it just is where it shouldn't be 
you know, because who knows, even if somebody shot it in their yard or something, the government's just going to come take it. It's not like it's going to be on the front page the next morning. No, you know that, I mean? that guy's disappearing pretty quick. That's right. That Sasquatch yeah. is gone, and that was a raccoon you shot. What? Yeah, it was a big that raccoon in was Detroit. That was pounds. <laughs> <laughs> it put a hole in my garage wall. <laughs> <laughs> That was a, you understand, that was a raccoon, that's it. We're not talking about it no more. We know where you right. work, we know your wife works, you know. Your son's just graduating college, right? You want that to still happen? That was a raccoon. You know? That's a raccoon. <laughs> Jay, did you see its face at all when it was chasing you? Yeah, it, it was like, um, no, I can't I can't describe its eyes. I can't describe its um, facial features because... Honestly, all I all I remember is there was a face. It mm. wasn't the same as his hair and his and his arms and everything coming at me. It was a bear, not a bear, but uh, not. It wasn't the same as his everything else. You know, like his, sure. it, you know, and it was. Uh, but the rest of my attention was all on what he was doing, oh, like yeah. the whole movements of his body. It, it, at first, I, I, like when I was watching it through the woods. I just was like trying to understand how I came to the the uh, excuse me I came to the conclusion that it was a person I was seeing walking walking through the woods because I didn't understand how he could be so big, you know what I mean? Like I knew it was far away, but once I knew it wasn't a massive branch that was falling, I didn't understand how a person because and then when it came out. And it, it hit into the parking lot. Mm. That was it, man. It just, I, I, I got a, I got a chance. And that's why I was froze because it was just coming at me. And I, I was just almost absorbing what I was seeing, man, trying to process it. And uh, fear will give you a hernia. Wow. Like, all right, I'm not kidding. That's intense. All that right, is very ass, intense. Was, intense is, is uh, an understatement. Yeah. All right. Because they didn't come down for two weeks. But the thing was, um, looking back now, of course, uh, you know, I got the, the the more probable explanation that it was some sort of, you know, joke being played on me somehow, some high budget, you know, craziness to scare one 17 year old. You know what I mean? Because I don't wow. know what could explain what I saw. And uh, I was like a clean napkin on a clean white yeah. silk handkerchief tied to an antenna of a car before it dro- leaves California and drives cross country. You know what right, I'm saying? Right. <laughs> Jay, did you, did you go back to that area and look for tracks or anything like that? Um, yeah, me and my, well, me and my brother did when he came home, you know what I mean? Um, uh, my brother from, uh, in, in the, in the war, Oh, sure. but uh, I, I was, um, he was, um, he was coming home anyway when when um at the time and um it wasn't it wasn't the way i remember it we went back several times you know what i mean and uh i think we even tried to go on devil's night and halloween in detroit Ooh. There, there's a Ooh. um devil's night is uh, the night before halloween mm-hmm. right especially back then you know but we we tried to go back because my brother was the only one that actually believed me you know what I'm saying? My brother was the only one that actually believed me, but you know, I went I went with um my brother Shaggy, who's um I call sure. him my brother, you know. Yeah, yeah. We went and uh back during the day and all that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I didn't go we didn't go back there and try to resummon anything or whatever until my until later, you know what I mean? You, you you know. went back and you tried to do some more Ultimate Warrior and try to. Oh yeah, when my when my brother came home, yeah yeah, when my brother came home from the military, wow. you know. Wow. Man, yeah, we did what all a that, story, you know? Jay. That's an incredible yeah. story. It's embarrassing, you know. If I was watching this, I'd be like, oh man, that ain't even hardly a big foot because I seen and heard some craziness, you know. I, I mean, mm. people, some people's stories. It's, you know, what my favorite Bigfoot stories are. Tell me more. When when people say um they became friends with a sasquatch oh sure you know what i mean like in in yeah. they they, be, they befriended one and 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 what it was like i I, lo- I like hearing that because um if it's told well 
you know what I mean? It could be really cool, you know, and more possible to believe. But if it, it you know what I mean? Because I want to believe. Do you yeah. do you believe, brother? Do you believe? Absolutely, in- dude. I have had some. I've had some things happen to me in Iowa when I was out with my friend uh, Tate Hieronymus, and uh, man, we were looking for Sasquatch out in Iowa, and we had wood knocks, we had a tree pushed over in front of us, and audio recorder, 3.45 a.m. that night, something unzipped my tent, and I didn't leave the tent at all, dude, so that's wild yeah. stuff, right? And that, you can look up Tate.Hieronymus on YouTube, and you can watch, he made a documentary on it, and it's... The sounds there, man. It's wild. So I believe in it. Man, yeah. Well, I do too. I mean, you know, like if if I had if I was on a if they if like if they had me in a guillotine and they're like, Do you think there are Sasquatches? Yes or no, your life is in the line. You know what I mean? Mm. We know the answer. But if you're wrong, you know, if you're right, you can live or something. This is it. You know, I would probably have to say I had to say, I seen one. You saw it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I know what I saw. And I, I, if I hallucinated, that was the only time ever in my life. You know what I mean? That something like that has ever happened. I don't have a history of seeing monsters or dragons and shit. Like, mm. that is the only time I ever saw anything like that. You know what I mean? Like, like it was outrageous, man. You know? So, I, I had to say, yeah, man. <sighs> what do you think? Of, uh, what do you think of Todd Standing? So, okay. All right. Uh, I don't think anyone will watch this episode anyways, Jay. Don't know. Um, so Todd is an interesting figure, right? Um, and I will say hats off to you because I, I saw your interview with him on your live stream a year or so ago. It was oh, very man. well done. I was, uh, you know, I was very surprised. You guys are excellent interviewers. And uh, that was a great interview with Todd. Um you know, the video he has captured is so much different than other um, representations of Sasquatch. Uh, it is a thing, though, that I would I would definitely want to go up there uh, to the area in British Columbia myself uh, before passing judgment, because I, I don't know if that's that's fair to do that without actually going up there. But if I was to say, look at it, I'd be like, oh, I don't know if that's a normal looking Sasquatch, but what is normal about a Sasquatch, you know? So. You're right. And, and, and the worst thing about Bigfoots, and I say it all the time, is Bigfoots look like a guy in a suit. Sure. I mean, like every single time you see a footage of it, it's like, that's a guy in a suit. If Bigfoots are real, that's a guy. what a guy in a suit looks like. You know what I'm saying? Like only giant. Mm. Like that's why everybody's gonna say that because it's a walking thing that ain't a guy in a suit though. It's a thing. Right. I'm saying like it's it's not like it's not like you're saying it's a a dragon or or um or like a mothman or something. Oh. It's like a possible thing from like evolution. You know what I mean? And, and possible, you know link between a a, a, a gorilla and, and man you know what i mean okay. somewhere in the center of that or something you know that, that whose existence is reliable on being elusive mm. you know what i'm saying oh, that, yeah. that, that oh, could yeah. be what the species believes it's like it's almost like the the um their existence is smart enough to know to stay away from man you know what i mean oh they're extremely could, smart yeah yeah, man, because if they would, they probably knew, they probably saw, they're probably friends with the natives, right? And he actually helping in the crops and things, as the legend said, has it. But when the uh, Europeans came, they didn't understand, so they're shooting. And then they became less and less and fearful, you know what I mean, for their existence. And now their entire existence relies on being elusive you know what i mean and hidden and and, and uh, absolutely and and there's, there's areas theory, you know? there's areas like uh southeast oklahoma that is so remote but it gets so much rain and there's these sasquatch there and like no one can touch them because they're so far out in the mountains except for like uh the newac which there's these hardcore guys that go out and study bigfoot in the mountains of oklahoma crazy stuff jay man hey brother 
I know. Listen, I was about to go you out know? with Todd Stanton. I do. I was about to go out with Todd Stanton. So I'm, I'm I was going to ask you. I know yeah. you, you wanted to go out with him per that interview, but did that happen? Well, first time we were booked, you know what I'm saying? Mm. We were literally going, I believe, in two weeks. From uh, but my girlfriend passed away, you know. I'm, oh, I'm, I'm drama sorry to hear bombing. That, Jay. I ain't drama. It's all good. I'm yeah. not drama bombing. This is that was, sorry to hear was that. no, hey, I appreciate that, you know. Mm. We um, but that I had to be like, I ain't coming out there right now, you know what I'm saying? Not the right so, time, so yeah, so we had to cancel on him. So we had another excursion planned, you know what I'm saying? Just recently, not too recently, maybe two months ago. That's pretty recent, right. That is very recent. Yeah. <laughs> so we had another excursion plan, right? And I was seeing this girl and I was like, um, come on a big butt hunt, you know? And, oh, yeah. And, oh, yeah. <laughs> it's not like a dope place to bring some chicks. You know what I mean? Out on the bonfire, <laughs> looking for Todd standing, looking for yeah, big foot. Because, bro, if he's got some eight foot homie running around in a Bigfoot suit in the middle of the night, you know, and he, cause he's, I, here's the way he does it. You understand he's a genius either way. You gotta know this, bro. Listen. All right. All right. First of all, if he, if he's a Bigfoot, um, if he, if he's faking it, he's actually got built those, made that documentary, built those masks and, and had whatever he's done and have, have everybody swore to secrecy or whatever. Whatever his secrets are, you know what I'm saying? And, and now he charges people and brings them out to that location, right? Some people have sightings, he said. Some His website says some people hear things, you know what I'm saying? Some people have nothing, you know what I mean? Uh -huh. But he's constantly out there doing that, bringing people out there, you know what I mean? It's, it's the way I understand it. And um, I'm like, that's genius. If he thought of that all up. Like, I'm going to make a documentary that I film these real Sasquatches right in the face, you know? And then I'm going to have it come out on YouTube, and it's going to blow up, and everybody's going to think I know the spot, you know what I mean? And I'm going to charge them all and bring them all in to come and see. And every once in a while, I'm at Big Tim, uh, Dumb John's uh, uh, seven-foot-nine uncle, you Big know what Tim. I mean? Running around in a Chewbacca suit and through the woods. And he tells everybody, you know, Here's the thing, they're up in Canada, right? It was up in Canada. Oh, yeah, radium, yep. So I can't, nobody can bring, none of me and my boys can't bring no weapons up there. No, you, know what you I mean? can't, no, no. So <laughs> I got all the weaponry, you know what I mean? He's like, I got the piece right here on the hip, you know? And, and then we hear Bush, Bush is about, like, settle down, everybody, stay where you're seated. Yeah. I got this, you know what I mean? And then he comes running back, I saw that much! <laughs> Oh my goodness. That's an I'll interesting way <laughs> to look at it. <laughs> or or we're all just sitting there and somebody's talking, and then all he's like, Lock! And he points over, and you just see this guy in the moonlight running across the field in a Sasquatch suit. You know what I mean? That would and be he, legit. You know that would be legit. Tom, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. if he's actually pulling that off, that's dope to me in a sense. Like, as a, from a hustler standpoint, he's getting paid. Now, Flip side of all that, right? Mm -hmm. That's just the street. That's the street in me. You that's know what I mean? Like I, 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 it is. I respect yep, the hustle, yep. like that idea. So I'm talking about this just a couple months ago. You know, I'm all out right. here wilding now, brother. I'm, I'm out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm thinking I'm bring. I'm coming to the to the camp, and Sasquatches might show up, and this is gonna be fun. And uh, he, my brother's like, he wants to talk on the phone. You know, mm -hmm. I mean, he wants to. Yeah, he wants to talk on the phone. And I was like, why, man? You know, I like him. And we're cool. I just want him. I'm like, oh, my brother set it up. He's like, no, he wants to talk on the phone. So I get on the phone, right? And the first thing we start talking about is he's talking about how nature, man has lost touch with nature. You know what I mean? And All right. when, he, when he proves that Sasquatches exist, um, it's going to become such a hot commodity a topic or whatever that it's going to reignite man's passion for nature you know what i mean and i was like damn that's shit that's a good way to think but that's a lot to, that's a big mission you know what I'm saying? it is like, yeah you know so that's dope then he's like first thing is 
be in shape, be ready for a lot of walking. You know what I mean? And I'm like, hold on, Absolutely. man. I'm like, I don't know about all that walking. What about a four wheeler or something? What about? You know, he's like, he's like, no, we're gonna have to do some walking. I'm like, man. Oh, I was walking, you know, and he's like, just be in shape. And I'm like, all right. And then he was like, um, and no substances, no nothing. Can we have a snow, a s'mores? Is that all right? You know, he's like, because if you, he said, if you're inebriated in any way, and, and Todd's cool, I guess my boy, he gave me yeah, a, yeah, a yeah. plaster of a Bigfoot print and I love it. You know, I was on oh, my nice. bedroom wall. Okay, Let cool. Let it be known. All right. But, um, you know, he said, if you're inebriated in any way, the Sasquatch will sense that and they won't come. You know what I mean? But I just don't like the idea of going out there with my girlfriend and her friends and telling everybody, oh, we can't have no beer at night around the bonfire. Sasquatches don't like beer. It just don't make, just didn't sound right. Like I, the trip started to become like, I don't know. I'm I'm lazy, man. I I didn't want. I I would like to go to location, but here's the main reason. Okay. He was like, where the documentary we was shot is s- snowed out oh, this wow. time of year. So, but I know a different location we can go to in in Washington or in Oregon or something like that. And I okay. was like. Here's my thinking. Here's my thinking, bro. This is where Todd's slipping. And I'm talking as Todd's as Todd's friend and as a fellow hustler. Okay? Mm-hmm. I got clown paint on my face. Don't forget. Right? I, I can see that. <laughs> it's cool. Todd is slipping because if he happened to catch Bigfoot on film, mm-hmm. let alone three right or however many he did in that documentary if he happened to go out there that weekend and catch those sasquatch a family of sasquatch on film that would have been a miracle oh yeah right absolutely come on now a miracle let alone this is where he's slipping is now he knows two locations where the bigfoot so i'm like oh you just know two now you know what I mean? You caught Bigfoot on film. You know what I mean? Like multiple times on that trip out there. You know, the, the female one looking one, you got them all in the face, running up a mountain, hiding up a tree. All right, you got mad lucky. You're the man. You already got the belt. You know what I'm saying? You're the no, champ. Th- right. Yep. Totally. But yeah. since then, when I go to his YouTube clips, he's like, I don't know if you can hear himself sometimes. Like he he sh- looks at other views of Sasquatches, and he says, um, he says, uh, yes, that's very similar to the way Sasquatch is. I've seen uh, Sasquatch ones that walk like that, and and then you're like, how many Sasquatches has he seen? You know what I mean? And how does he know where all the Sasquatches are? And I love Todd standing. And I said at the beginning, I don't know why it's always Royal Rumble out here in the Bigfoot mm-hmm. world. You no, know I what get I mean? it. It's a Royal Rumble for sure. Yeah. But at the same time, it's hard for everybody not to be like that because we all want to believe. Mm. Okay. Yeah. And when somebody starts talking about something that's hard for us to believe, you know what I mean? As a person, it gets to be frustrating. You're like, damn, you had me for years. Right. But now when I look at you, you acting like you know all the hot spots all over western US and, and Cam- Canada and you say it's because of your Sasquatch senses. And that's more hard for me to believe in. It's like you can believe in a Patterson Gilman like they happened to catch it. They caught him. They caught it in sixty seven. They had him, you know, uh Patty, they had him on Do you, film, you, you know? believe in and, the Patterson Gimlin film? Of course I do. Oh yeah. I do. Absolutely I do. I do. That's probably one of the main reasons I do believe. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? But but I've seen other footage that, that I choose to believe. You know, I've seen the one, you know, and, yeah, man. But but listen, let me be clear on Todd. Yeah, yeah. I didn't want I, I didn't want to go be oh, you're good. He, he probably wouldn't like my humor. And I don't know if we'd have to talk about Sasquatches the whole time. You know what I mean? Like 
like, dog, how about we get off the Sasquatch since off the 14 hour combo? You know what I mean? Like, it was, how about some, you know, I don't know. But I, I just, I love time. I just like keep it like that. I was like, maybe I better not go camping with him for the next four days off in the woods. Well, well maybe it'll not. work sometime in the future. Who knows? Right? Yeah, maybe. But, yeah, 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 I know you guys. It's a tight knit world. I love Ty Stanley. He came on my show, on our show. He's my boy. And, um, but Ty, quit saying you found all them Sasquatches. Come on, dog. The one you had us all. Stop already. So God, I'm a dick. I am a dick, ain't I? No, I'm no sorry, you're good. It, it's it's cool to talk honestly, but the thing about uh, you know, that area is crazy squatchy. There's a huge chance you could see something up there. Um, but the cool thing about Big Foot Society is I invite people of all backgrounds to come on, tell their story, and, uh, you know, no hate. So, No, no doubt. Man, how, please yeah, don't. Yeah, yeah. Please, everybody. Oh, yeah. Hello. <laughs> I'm not blaming. I'm not dissing Todd. Oh, yeah. I got nothing oh, yeah. to love. I got love Todd, bro. Oh, yeah. Come on, man. Let's all. We love Todd, for real. Jay, all right, you, listen. Oh, tell me, tell me more. One more thing. All right. Um, I got a question for you, brother. Yeah, yeah. I'm sorry if I'm I'm geeking out, man. It's my I I, I get to talk to Bigfoot people. I'm loving ever, this, dude. And I, I'm loving this, brother. Listen, um, have you ever heard the story from the two girls that grew up on a farm with their grandfather raising bas basically a baby Sasquatch? No, I've never heard the story. Oh, are you serious? Where does this take place? Oh. Oh man, I hope somebody listening can tell us because I can't remember the name. But listen, it's a story. Two, the writer is writing the story, but the story is the two girls, were, their grandfather had burned a, a big, huge pile of logs, I believe, at the, at the beginning of the story. The little girls were probably seven and eight or, or something like that. And their grandfather burned a big thing of logs and he heard some screaming. And he went over there and it was a baby Sasquatch and he pulled it out of the, the logs and the smoke and he put it in his uh, barn. And that night, something came and broke it out of there from the outside. Like they believe, like it was probably its parents or something came, broke the Sasquatch out, right? Two nights later, it was back and he put it back in the barn and it just, and, and he would feed it. And it would go mm. back in the woods and he, after a while, they would ring a big bell and it would come out and eat. And the girls would hide up in the trees because it wouldn't come out if the girls were around. You know what I mean? And the girls said it taught the grandpa how to pull fish out of the river. And he raised it from when it was a baby by feeding it all the time. And But they never had, like, too much physical connection. You know what I mean? It was just like it would, it would trust them and they would sit there together and stuff. And um, it's a fascinating, out of all the Bigfoot stuff I've seen and read, that story is fascinating man that because these two girls according to the writer of the book and it's an audio book and i'm hoping somebody will hear what i'm saying and know what i'm talking about it's a it's a it's a they grew up on a farm i believe in north carolina and um it is the coolest most highly detailed story and the woman writing the book is interviewing these two sisters trying to catch them in lies like she's telling you in the book and it's an audio book too, but she's telling you how she's trying to catch them up. But there, there is no catching them up because they both were like raised in the same thing. And they talk about how one part in the book they talk about how the girls um they they're now in like uh, high school and they're dating these college kids, right? So something happened in the main main house. There was some sort of issue. So they were having, they were staying out in a trailer next to the, the farm in, 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 in a trailer and they were having holiday dinner and the old man forgot to feed the Sasquatch. So they're having holiday dinner and there was a, um, a, a round circle in the wall where a fan would go into this trailer, but the, it was no fan in there. And the college kid is sitting there in, in the kitchen. They're all talking, laughing, having holiday dinner. And the Sasquatch reaches in, you know what I mean? It grabs the, the kid's shoulder. And the kid's screaming. He sees a giant hand, catches mid size. He's screaming. And um, the old man's like, ah, damn it, feed it. Feed it away. He's like, give it dog food. So she just filled up a um, big bowl of dog food and, and went out there and set it down. 
And she said it looked at her and and um did what she believed was saying thank you and then grabbed the, the food and left with it. You know what I mean? Oh man. Like said thank you, but or something to that gesture, you know. But when you hear the way she describes it, you know. Anyway, in the book, so she's like, this is where I caught him. So she's like, what was the kid's name? Because when the lady, the girl who's now like my age, these girls are like not my age, now like 50, right? She's like, what was your boyfriend's name? And he's like, Jimmy Swanson or whatever. You know, she knew the name or whatever. She's like, look the dude up. She found the dude. Whoa. And the dude came through and grabbed me. He's a Bigfoot. They live with Bigfoots out there. That's why I love this book. It's the most convincing because she did her research. Wow. Any of these girls trying to prove them wrong. And it's the most detailed, convincing story of what I think a Sasquatch would be. You know what I mean? <sighs> that, that's intense. I just you the name, homie. <laughs> she also goes into other details where it's just like, I think like, ah, oh, it sounds exactly what I believe would happen. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, and how I, it sounds believable. And as the woman writing the book does the research, it's, it has a fascinating ending at the end. Man, I just advise it to everybody, man. If, so, if someone watching knows what book this is, put it in the comments so we can check it out. And Jay, Please. I got one more question for you. Yes, uh, my man. This is from, so my friend Asher's from On Wednesdays We Talk Weird Podcast. She was like, you got to ask Jay, is the whoop whoop, is that like the Bigfoot whoop? You know, the whoop whoop that ICP does. Is that the same thing as the Bigfoot whoop? Oh, that's so weird because I never really put them together. You know oh. what I mean? I mean, I did before recently but because we put it on a – we did like a Bigfoot jersey, you know? All right. And and we were trying to think of what to put on the back, and we were like, well, you know, Bigfoot's are like whoop, whoop. You know? There <laughs> and, uh, and I, we're like, well, that's sort of what we do, whoop, whoop. You know? <laughs> Maybe there's some sort of uh, connection there, man. Maybe who knows? Know. Who knows? Yeah, but we, I never did uh, make that connection. But maybe it's it's all riding within the same dimension. You know what I mean? Somehow that makes any sense. Jay, it's been so fun talking to you. I want to be respectful of your time. If you ever have any other friends that have seen Bigfoot, send them my way to Bigfoot Society. I'd love to talk to them. Uh, Juggalos, if you're watching this, email me Bigfoot Society at gmail.com if you've seen Bigfoot. Um, Jay, is there anything you want to share? Like, how can people keep up to date with what you're doing? All that good stuff. Uh, my Instagram, uh, at violentj.icp. And, um, that's probably the best way, you know, or, or, uh, the real IC, what is it? The real ICP, the real ICP on, uh, Instagram or, or Facebook and all that. You know what I mean? But, uh, we're always doing this, man. We, I'm, I had fun, man. Hey, one, one more quick question. Have yes, you sir. ever seen, um, you ever seen that movie Bigfoot country? I haven't actually. Is it good? Man, it's a, it's dope. It's a low budget movie, but it's just funny. And it's dope, man. I, I'm going like to check it, it out. I'm going to check uh, you I got showed it. it to my boy Ouija Mac. He was like, "That movie sucked." I was like, "You're crazy. That movie was fresh." You got to watch like, In Search of Bigfoot from the '70s. It's so good. You will love it. I Jay. did. I seen it. You I seen it? it? I seen With it. Robert W. Morgan. Oh, yeah. I met him. Yeah, dude. it's all like creepy and weird and black and white and crazy, yeah. right? So good. Yeah, I love it. I love so it. Good. I love it. He's a cool dude. <laughs> he is. He is. But uh, thank you, brother. We can do this again, man. I love. I love. Um, if you ever need a panel or anything, just looking at footage or anything, bro, I love it. We'll I be in it. touch, Jay. Thanks so much for reaching out, brother. Thank you, my man. Peace.